earlier you were talking about like basically like these kind of biological imperatives that like women and men have naturally fallen to and then um basically feminism is like trying to destroy that that's like my understanding of your argument but i don't think it's just biological because i don't think we're just bodies and flesh i think we're also souls souls and bodies together. okay because what I was going to say is that when people make like, these biological arguments of men having to be this one way and women having to be this other way, to me that doesn't necessarily follow because like we've literally had laws after law in place trying to prevent women from getting into the workforce, from having um, being able to open a bank account, from even being able to pursue certain legal matters. So when people make this biological argument of like, oh no, you know, men are just more naturally inclined towards working roles, it would follow then that there would be no need for these laws. It would just be a biological imperative. There's no need for you to have a law where, you know, blood flows through you or where you have a heart. These are just things that are true. But when it comes to our roles in society, and I think this is what feminists push back on it seems like instead of it being a real biological imperative it is forced upon the social structure yeah I, are you suggesting that women are as happy working in an office as a man is um they could be depends on the woman. hypothetically i guess they could be but do you think talking to your female friends and looking at what social scientific data there are you really think women are as satisfied and happy in some. office work? i definitely I, i'm think just saying some. in the aggregate yeah, I if think... If you're really being honest with me right now, I think you would say probably women are less happy. Well, no, I don't think either wait, of them wait, are wait, happy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> like, yeah, I think but most which is happier than the other? Yeah, which no. Which is happier than Well, th what I think is interesting about this argument is that we do have like a clear period of time where, hey, you know, women had... were staying at home, whatever. Then when the when men went out to war, they went towards these jobs. And when the men came back, they didn't want to leave. So to me, to be saying like, oh no, like, you know, they're all in general happier at home. Well, we had a clear period of time where we women did. We fought did. expressly right. against that. No, we did. And then we, we, as I mentioned earlier, we measured against it and <laughs> we measured how it turned out. And all but one of the surveys showed that the women became less happy. So I, I'm, I'm totally willing to well, take these surveys with a grain of salt. But in as much as we can measure them, they undercut your argument. No. If there was a survey that showed that men are happier just sitting on their ass all day on like some island they just are. watching TV. They are in the short term. Do you think that they should strive towards that? Uh, no, because they wouldn't be happier in the long term. Because happiness is an objective matter. It's not purely um, subjective. So uh, like men, though, truly, this is why Genesis 3 is written the way that it is men do not want to lord over women they don't want to dominate women they don't want to be knuckle draggers you know what men want to do they want to sit on the couch and eat potato chips and be left alone that's what men that that's the broken dark right, i'm just saying i think everyone would be happier in the short term sitting at home on a couch which is why i think those studies no i don't think so self-reported happiness refers to that no. type and not you i think yeah. women would be happier in the short term playing the girl boss and having all sorts of you know color-coded notebooks and pen, pens and stuff but they would find that they don't actually like it they don't really want to work at the law firm they don't really want to be in the widget factory factory they they would rather do something that is more naturally feminine i think it's also interesting how you're ascribing these surveys of like self-reported happiness going lower as a result of in the being in the workplace when i wonder if you start um, and other things, yeah. yeah because yeah exactly i wonder if when you start um looking down into the specific reasons why a person might report greater amounts of unhappiness um, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons that could range, right? So right. for example, They're all um, feminist, though. <laughs> <laughs> higher, like, let's say, experiencing like some sort of like sexual harassment in the workplace, for example, which in that case, it's not necessarily, oh, they're less happy doing work. They're just less happy the, experiencing these days, sexual harassment, for example. I'm not saying it never happens because obviously, you know, you hear some Me Too stories, Matt Lauer, whatever, you know, Vince McMahon. I'm not saying it, it doesn't happen, but these days, the law and the culture are so radically uh, opposed to men and in favor of women in the situation, the uh, frequency of sexual harassment in the workplace is basically zero. Can you give me an example? And the reason why I'm asking for an example specifically is because I actually, as a feminist, think one of the failures of the Me Too movement was um, not being able to legislate a lot of the grievances put into place. So even if like you're, a company is not supposed to like sexually harass, um, or you're not supposed to sexually arrest your subordinate, whatever, whatever. Um, most of these cases will never be criminal. They'll just be at most civil, maybe, if they're even prosecuted. Sure, so, but what are we talking about? We're talking about an, an errant comment, or we're talking about, you know, a, I like your shirt today, Sally, or something? Or are we talking about, you know, a, a rape or something? Yeah, I, I guess or, what sorry, I'm asking you assault. is, like, what specific um, laws have been put to place that heavily favor women against men? Well, there, um, there are already unfairly. laws. There are laws against sexual assault, right? And there are law, and but but the um, HR practices that have been put into place throughout corporate America uh, t t totally favor women. If a woman comes in and says, uh, you know, let's say a, a man and a woman in an office had a consensual affair, the minute that woman reports it, that guy is gone. 
A guy is gone at every major company in America. It, it, let's say that a, a man just kind of seems a little creepy or makes a woman feel uncomfortable because he compliments her glasses that day or something. That guy is very likely going to be gone. The, the, the corporate America has has so um, t t taken the the feminist position to heart that that men don't even want to speak to women in the workplace. It's one of the reasons that co companies often don't want to hire women is they recognize that their legal liability goes through the roof. That seems like an exaggeration. Was that? Do you actually think that that if a yeah. guy complimented a girl's glasses? I'm not saying she fired. would report it because people are usually nice and men and women generally like but each other. But you think that's how much the institutions have overcorrected that a man will get fired for just complimenting a woman innocuously I think he and would, unsexually? He, I think he very easily could be punished for that, yeah. Maybe not outright fired, but he, he would face a professional I mean, reprisal. it'd be cool to see stories of that. I haven't seen anything anywhere close, and I feel like yeah, I don't any know. type of conservative media outlet would like jump on that hard. All, all, I, all I've <laughs> got are, are anecdotes here. But no, I don't think the conservative media would because we're not. I'm not pro-sexual right. harassment. You also, know? to go back to happiness and feminism and girl bosses and females in the workspace, another reason that women could have lower reported happiness is because they're still showing or shoring up on most of the household duties despite now also right. taking up a, you know what I mean they're doing still a lion share don't have of domestic work they don't get married anyway so they don't even have households that's not true they're still they're still cohabitating they're still yeah, even within marriage I agree Remember, cohabitation makes women unhappy too yeah I mean even within marriage now you don't think a majority of there's a ton of marriages in which women are also working and then also shoring up a lion's share of the household duties yeah. and that's why they're unhappy because now they're being burdened in two directions yeah Sure. Or, but so what's the solution to that? I think the solution, the, I think the the normal solution, solution is men showing up more on domestic duties, but they won't because of freaking trad cons and neocons who are telling them that <laughs> no, it's gay and beta if they do these certain tasks. It is, <laughs> it is gay and beta most of the time. I agree. And I also but, think that's why men are suffering. So for instance, like the unemployment rate of men returning back to the workforce is very, very high right now. And that's because everything men in us, like trad cons and neocons. So for instance, What do you mean like, by neo? You mean like the him. sort of neocons. warmongering? What? <laughs> you're a neocon? I, I'm you not want to go politics. invade Libya or something? What, do you, the, what does that mean? I'm not the politics guy. Okay. No one neocon. Can I think we're using neocon in a way I'm not familiar with. Well, I'm, I'm seeing saying, Don Rumsfeld next to me. Mm. Okay. A lot of just men in us are actually hurting men, and I think the they're also hurting women. They're also hurting women because, like I said, women are doing worse mentally because they're showing up on domestic duties, and men won't take up these responsibilities because it's seen as gay and beta. And we're, you know what I mean? You guys so, are. So, the, but the solution is well, an easy solution. Wait, can I finish? Sure. Men are men in us are kind of pushing for this like revanchist return to just like older times, and even though you claim you're not trying to turn the clock back, a lot of the solutions that men in us are advocating for just won't help men because the burgeoning sectors right now are overly feminized and stuff like nursing, childcare, hospitality. And these industries are actually reaching out to men and they're trying to recruit them, but a lot of men will turn them down and instead they're sitting on their ass, they're addicted to opiates, like over half of unemployed men are addicted to some sort of painkiller. They're playing video games all day, they're jacking off to porn, which is yes, one problem, but there's so many others. Yeah. And feminism is was telling men, like, you know what I mean? Leave your toxic masculinity behind, join a nursing career, join a teaching career, but they won't do it because of trad cons and neocons telling them that they're gay and beta if they do these kind of like unwarranted like positions. Hmm, I don't Wait, know. I, I don't, am I in a like, warrior like position? What's that movie with De Niro and Ben Stiller? Meet the Parents, yeah. where he's the male nurse. Yeah. Do you agree with I like? Don't, I don't think that Richard Reeves' you don't think take what? on you don't think like what? men think should be the way we pushed point. women to join STEM. We should be pushing men to join HEAL, which is health, education, administrative, literacy jobs. Like, do you think that there should be a push? Like, instead of saying men do this job and women do this job, like I don't think track cons do as much as like red pillar. I'm not pointing to you say you're red pillar, but yeah. like that men, your role is to be an ATM machine and to make money and let, to be strong and fight and if you don't do that then you're not a man like you're not as much of a man if you're a teacher do you, you, do you agree with that? No I, I've okay. had wonderful male teachers you know okay. I, I don't really care to push people to any particular field or other okay. I think I'm not, no libertarian but I think the market will generally sort that out and, and I think interference in that regard is usually does more harm than good but uh, no a man but you know teaching is a very manly thing actually you know I mean it's a uh, you're imparting wisdom and knowledge and you're, you know, shaping a young mind. It's a very manly field. I agree, but you said women are better at domestic tasks than men are. And yeah, being a, a teacher or a nurse is not a domestic task. It can be, it can occur inside the home and frequently does. But and why does it seem like, why do you, why do people Domestic means within fear? the home. No, so but why do people see it as feminine? Like people see nurses and teachers as feminine. Like a third grade male teacher. Because they're very nurturing. Yeah, so is that something that you think is better suited for women? Yeah, I think women tend to be more nurturing than men. But so that's they're, because yeah. of their experience in the domestic life is that's why they're now more concerned with these nature. burgeoning industries such as nursing, teaching, childcare, hospitality, food preparation. It's because of what they're being trained to do at the home. So when trad cons say that like men should focus on public life while women should focus on these more domestic errands, 
sometimes they're actually hurting men in the long run because now men aren't equipped to do these burgeoning industries. No, to work I, in look, them. I think also, you know, don't forget, life isn't just set and, and static all the time. A woman could uh, say, go to school and then work a job. You know, I don't know. She teaches for a few years and then mm -hmm. she gets married and she wants to leave teaching or she's a nurse for a few years or what, you know, we're not, we don't just like sign up like serfs for the rest of our lives. We're just doing one task. But I do think that it's not just a matter of social construction. I think women are more nurturing. And so are nurses more likely to be women? You know it. Are elementary school teachers more likely to be women? Yes. But there wait, some men, there, but that's, that's interesting to say because when we look historically, like the reason why women tended to take those roles is because those were the only roles that society would let them take. It was not So says you. I don't really buy that. No, we can like look there at the laws study, right now. Uh, the last name was Wu on the researcher where like if right now we have like a certain percentage of women in STEM and a certain percentage of men in uh, like heel types of jobs. If people were actually choosing based on their interests, you'd get, you would still get more. You're right. But it would be like 30% Men but people industry. people are often deluded by their interests, you know, and pe people uh, have have a view of what they will excel at and uh, what they're inclined to do that is often out of step with reality and virtually and no probably one, you know, influenced by what society tells them they'll be totally good at, totally and, which and is but ironically I think we all concluded earlier that today it's the liberal feminist view that dominates all the major institutions right didn't we, uh, we yeah, no I think so when I men, thought that's what we said when men earlier. cite not wanting to join yeah. nursing and teaching as part, as part of the reason is because they see it as very feminine you think liberal feminism is the culprit and not meninism or neocon slash shredcon uh, you know, it's the neocon thing keeps keeps sh <laughs> shaking because neocons refer to like Irving Kristol and Norman Pitoris. Okay, we'll just say like, conservative. Yeah. Do you know. think when men say that they don't want to join nursing and teaching because the nursing programs and teaching programs have like put out, you know what I mean, research of why men won't join these industries despite them reaching out. And one of the biggest reasons is because they feel like it's overly feminine. Do you think that's due to liberal feminism or due to conservatism, mm -hmm. that fear? No, I think it's just natural. I think it's just a natural thing about men. They they are not inclined toward the uh, nur those more nurturing professions. But the, study, and but the alternative the is they're sitting at home unemployed right now. They're yeah, reaching they, out to unemployed men. It's not men in STEM. They're reaching out to men yeah, who maybe, are disaffected right now, maybe, and they won't do it still because it's seen as gay. Yeah, I think the men the men <laughs> should work, you know, but they should maybe do things that they're more inclined to do. I don't think we need to conscript men to go become nurses wearing frilly little dresses. And or, but they're not the more inclined to do because you know what I mean. Manual labor jobs are basically getting eradicated and a lot of these men but, not yeah. to be mean aren't necessarily but, smart enough to go into stem so i think other industries yeah. might be better for no, them look, but they won't do it they'd problems. rather sit at home to preserve their masculinity and i think conservatism <laughs> is to yeah. blame for that part of part of no i think mass migration is actually to blame for the, the problem of the working classes not having as much employment as they used to um which is something that conservatives generally haven't pushed i think there are all sorts of political reasons that that happens but i don't think that any amount of feminist indoctrination and brainwashing is going to convince a man that he really wants to do an extremely feminine role. It's not about I mean, really, wa really wants to do. Like, you know what I mean? That's an entitlement. Yeah, it's not just gay go for work. doing. That's a different I thing. Think, I think like, men, a critique yeah, of liberal feminism is that work. liberal feminism has done a lot to push up women, but it has left, I think, men behind in a sure. lot of ways. And this is one of those Also, ways. we're painting with way too broad a brush. I mean, a man can be a nurse and there are aspects of the nursing profession that can be perfectly masculine. And same, obviously, same goes with teaching. But if broadly, if we want to zoom it out even further and say, well, these loser men who are all addicted to O, Opiates and they're just like, you know, sitting around with porn. These guys need to get off their behinds and take the only job available to them, which is to put on a frilly dress and be a girl. I think that's a, a ridiculous, false dichotomy. But why do you see that as putting on a frilly dress to go into like nursing and hospitality? Because you're, you're using you're that presupposing example. presupposing that it's feminine and gay. You're doing the thing. <laughs> it, it is more feminine, yeah. It's frilly dressy to go into nursing. That's they what you're, wear that's what you're telling your audience here. To. You're telling them that they're preserving their masculinity to sit at home and half of them being addicted not, to painkillers. I'm telling you I think it's a false dichotomy. And I think the reason that you're picking those fields, which are... Those are the most burgeoning 15 sectors right now. Everything, A lot of other things are getting wiped out. <laughs> nursing is like a good what are the other? Into. What are the other 15? What are the other 13? Um, janitoring, nursing, okay, teaching, not, child care, not hospitality, yeah, food hospitality preparation. Not food preparation. That's not true. Oh, it's, I mean, so which ones are frilly? Just outline Let's it make for it me. Graph. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, ones are gay? In the so, spectrum of like Emeril Lagasse, right? Which who's one's in most food? dick yeah, sucking? Emeril Lagasse <laughs> is not... That's that's not too frilly, you know. If you're a big man chef, you just like bam throw in. That's that can Don't be pretty. Do you feel like you're hurting men with this being kind of janitor. rhetoric of being like you need to add so much machismo to these professions? Be like, okay, maybe I'm not you adding anything. I'm not adding anything. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, observing are. reality and articulating my perception. You, we, the reason you chose nursing is because you know that it's a, a generally I said a more nursing, field. teaching, childcare, food right. prep. Well, there are plenty of male teachers. They tend to be more at the 
a little bit more at the middle school level, then more at the high school level, then many more at the college level. That's true. Where where those teaching jobs require much less nurturing and a lot more just reciting guess, facts and logic. So, okay, I just want to ask, do you think it's better for a guy to sit at home and be unemployed than go into nursing? Like, no, do you I think, think, I think it's better. Wrong? I think it's better to work than not to work, as long as the work is not intrinsically But ideally, immoral. they shouldn't pursue nursing because it's gay. They can pursue whatever they like to pursue, but they. But you're asking me, why, why are these men not inclined to pursue careers that they consider silly. feminine? Because yeah. they're men, and because the differences between men and women are natural, and they're not contingent on what you say, and they're not contingent on what I say. Okay, my question is that, again, if these things are so natural, and we can search it up right now if you don't believe me, but why have there been laws in place preventing women from working in fields that are not nursing or teaching historically? If this is a biological imperative, there would be no yep, need be for these laws. Know, I'd be curious to know which laws. I'm, I'm not disputing that uh, women have been uh, encouraged to stay home and that, uh, you know, that socially that's changed because of the Second World War or because of the advent of the sexual revolution and contraception and all, all of these other things. That, that That's certainly true. Uh, but uh, I, th I think that for a long time, we recognized that the family is the building block of society, and so we wanted to encourage family formation and family stability. And part of family formation and family stability is someone being able to raise the children, someone being able to take care of the home while the other partner was outside of the home. And you might say, well, why can't the man stay home with the kids, and why can't the woman go to work? Yeah, it can happen. They're just generally not inclined to do that.